Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 122, and what I'd like to do today is discuss the parallel circuit. Now, we just discussed the series circuit, and that was where the current had a single path for the electrons to flow. Any break in the circuit would cause the rest of the circuit to fail because there'd be an opening, and it's no different than keeping the switch on the off position. So as soon as we cut a wire, we're not allowing electrons to flow. That could be done by just unscrewing a light bulb. Now, parallel circuits work a little differently. And the circuits in your house are connected in parallel because if you have one light bulb go off uh, because it blows out, it's not going to turn off the rest of the power in your, in your house. So what you have is a situation where there's different paths for the electrons to flow. And as soon as you have a spot where the electrons have a choice, we call that a special term. It's called a junction. When there's a junction, you immediately have a parallel circuit. Two resistors that share a common set of junctions are, are considered to be in parallel. And when we have a parallel circuit, they're going to act differently than a series circuit. Now, if we typically look at how parallel circuits are drawn, we draw them sideways. You could also draw them vertically as well. But the common way to draw parallel circuits is that the resistors or lamps or light bulbs are parallel to one another. So you'll have a power supply, typically on the left or on the bottom, and then you'll have um, the resistors forming almost like rungs on a ladder. It, it kind of looks like a ladder, and the resistors or lamps are the rungs that you would climb up in terms of the ladder. Since we usually stick to three resistors in series, we'll do the same with parallel just to show um, how, how they change when we use the same resistors. However, you can have as many um, resistors in parallel as possible. The one thing to note, though, is because there's new paths, if you remove one resistor or one lamp from a, from a parallel circuit, there's still going to be an opportunity for electrons to flow. You're still going to have a complete circuit. And the rest of the lights aren't going to fail. So if I had three resistors, um, three rungs on the ladder, and I remove one of them, the other two will still work. If I re were to remove two, we're basically down to a simple circuit and the single light bulb or resistor would still function properly. Now, the one thing that's different in a parallel circuit is that the voltage is common to all of the components. When you plug a light bulb into a wall outlet, you're providing 120 volts to that light bulb. When you provide that 120 volts um, and you plug in another lamp at a different outlet, it's also getting 120 volts. You're not sharing the 120 between the lamps. So that's something that's important in a parallel circuit, that every component gets the same um, voltage as the power supply supplies. So the beauty of the parallel circuit is I believe it's a little easier to calculate certain characteristics because V is the same everywhere. If you already know R and you know that V is the same as the battery, well, you have two of the three um, variables in our V equals IR equation, and you should be able to find the current flowing in each section quite easily. Now, one thing that is true about a parallel circuit is that since we're giving the electrons more paths or more choices, we're actually decreasing the overall resistance of the circuit. Now, to find the equivalent resistance, it's a little more difficult than with a series circuit. Series circuits were just added together. The total resistance increased as we made it more difficult for the electrons to flow. And it was just a summation. R1 plus R2 equals R3 uh, plus R3 equals the total resistance or the equivalent resistance. In a parallel circuit, since you're decreasing the overall resistance, the equation is a little more complex. What you have to do is find the reciprocals of the resistances add them together, and then that gets you the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance. So then what you'll have to do again is find the reciprocal of those answers to find the equivalent resistance. So what's the equation look like? Well, it looks like 1 over RT, or 1 over REQ if you're using equivalent, 
equals 1 over r1 plus 1 over r2 plus 1 over r3. And this one proves to be difficult for many students because they forget that when you find the reciprocal of the of the um, original resistors and add them together, you also have to find the reciprocal at the end to find the equivalent resistance. Many students want to leave answers as 0 0.01 or 0 0.00625 or something like that instead of hitting the reciprocal button on the calculator again and finding the final um, answer. They often leave their answer as 1 over RT instead of RT. So how do you use your calculator to do this? What you're going to do is hit the x to the negative 1 button. Or in some calculators, it will be 1 over x button. But the, the calculator that I typically use, it's x to the negative 1. So if we had a um, resistance of 5, 10, and 15 ohms, what you would do is do 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 equals 1 over r. Now, if you want to use fractions to do this, what we're going to need to do is find the least common denominator. And if you have 5, 10, and 15, the least common denominator is going to be 30. So 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 would be 30 on the bottom. So what that will do is produce 6 thirtieths, 3 thirtieths, and 1 thirtieth. I'm sorry, 2 thirtieths, because 2 times 15 um, is 30. Now when you add those together, you would end up getting... 6 plus 3, which is 9, plus 2, which is 11, 11 over 30. Now, a lot of students on state assessments will leave that as 11 over 30. But remember, that equals 1 over RT. So what you have to now do is flip it again and get 30 over 11. And when you do that, you end up getting 2.73 ohms. So the equivalent resistance of the 5, 10, and 15 ohm resistors in parallel is 2.73 ohms. Now, here's a way to remember what your final answer needs to be. Because you're giving the electrons a choice, the equivalent resistance is always going to be less than the smallest resistor. So 2.73 is less than the 5 ohm resistor, so you have a good chance of being correct. Now, of course, um, if you leave it as 11 thirtieths, that's also smaller than 5. But that's a really small value, less than 1. And typically, our values are not going to be that small for the equivalent resistance. Now, if you know the equivalent resistance, that means you can draw a circuit where you have a single resistor and a single power supply. So if we have a 12-volt power supply and we have our 2.73 ohm resistor, what we can do is divide V equals IR, 12 volts equals I times um, 2.73 ohms, and we'll end up getting 4.4 amperes. And that's the current that leaves the battery. Now, when we do that, that we can expand back out and have our original circuit. So now, the battery supplies 4.4 amps of current. Well, when the current gets to the first junction, choosing between the 5 ohm and the rest of the circuit, some of it's going to go through the 5 ohm, and the rest of it's going to go through the other two resistors. Then it gets to the junction again where you have the 10 and the 15. Well, some of the current's going to flow through the 10, and some's going to go through the 15 ohms. Now, of course, current flows through the path of least resistance. So the majority of the current is going to flow through the smaller resistors, but then the rest has to have some current flowing through it, or else it's not going to take any of the voltage away. So what we can do is do V equals IR for each of the three resistors using 12 volts and the um, resistance values and find the current flowing through each. Then we can add them together and see if they're equal to 4.4 ohms. I'm sorry, 4.4 amps. Now, if we do V equals IR with the 5, 10, and 15, we're going to get 2.4 for the 5 ohm resistor, 1.2 for the um, 10 ohm resistor, and it looks like 0.8 amps through the 15 ohm resistor. Now, if we add those three together, we end up getting 4.4 amps. So the beauty of circuits is that you always have different ways to solve for the variables, and you should be able to always check your answers. Whatever leaves the battery has to add up to the total of the three resistors. So how do parallel circuits work? Well, in terms of a summary of equations, we have the following. We have the voltage is the same everywhere. 
So VT equals V1 plus equals V2 equals V3. The current adds up to the total because it's going to split through each junction. So IT equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. And then finally, to find the equivalent resistance, we have our strange equation that's a little more difficult to deal with. 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And remember, you need to have the least common denominator. You can't just add the fractions on the bottom and add over the top. It's not going to be 3 over 30. You need to use least common denominators and then um, solve for the final answer. Using the x to the negative 1 button will allow you to solve without doing least common denominators. But using 5, 10, and 15, I picked numbers that were easy to deal with so we can think about um, the common being the 30 on the bottom of that fraction. Now, when we solve parallel circuits, what we can do is typically find the current first because R and V um, are this, R is what we start with. V is the same everywhere, so we can find the current, add those together, and then find the equivalent resistance. I'm sorry, find the total current, and then do V equals IR to find the equivalent resistance. And that can allow us to check our equivalent resistance using the 1 over R equation. So there's many ways to solve for parallel circuits. There's many different ways to solve series circuits. In fact, we can have circuits that are a combination of the two, which I call complex circuits, which is a little bit of series and a little bit of parallel. Either way, the more practice problems you do, the better you're going to be at solving for any type of circuit problem on a state assessment, on a quiz, or on a test. So make sure you practice um, solving for as many different circuit problems as you can. At this point, what I'd like to do is take out the whiteboard and do a full example problem using the light bulbs we looked at yesterday with the series circuits. Let's see how a series circuit behave, uh, so how different um, light bulbs act in parallel compared to how they acted in series. Let's take out the whiteboard now. Thank you. All right, let's see how parallel circuits differ from series circuits. Well, first of all, we draw them a little differently. And what we have are alternative paths for electrons to flow when they have a choice. And we have these spots on the circuit where a choice can be made. We have a fancy name for those. They're called junctions. And in this case, we have a choice here where the electrons can flow down here or over here. And then we have a choice here, same thing. At the bottom here, the electrons will combine back together. So the ones coming from here will combine with the ones down here, and they'll flow back into the battery. And the same thing will happen at this point. Now, the voltage here, because the electrons are energized, Turning doesn't lose any energy. They only lose energy when they go through a component. So the way a parallel circuit works is the voltage is going to be the same everywhere in the circuit. And that's why when you have your electricity in at your house, the light bulbs work the proper way when you connect them to the wall outlets because each outlet is getting the total voltage that it should. Now if we look, when the electron goes through this component, there's nothing stealing any more energy. So it has to use all of that voltage. That's why it gets all the voltage from the original. Same thing here. There's no other components taking away energy. Same with this last one. So a parallel circuit has the voltage same in each spot. So the total voltage is the same for every resistor. And I guess I should label the resistors R1, R2, and R3. Now, when the current flows here, some of it is going to go down through R1, and some of it's going to continue on to go through some through R2 and some through R3. So the way the current works, the total current is going to be the sum of the currents flowing through each of the components. So if we had 10 amps and one goes down here, there's nine left for these two, and maybe three goes here, and then six goes there.
but the total is going to be 10. And this is conservation of charge. Now with that, the one thing that is a little odd is how resistance works. Now resistance is going to go down as you have more choices. But it's not just a subtraction. The way it works mathematically is a reciprocal equation. And this is one of the equations that students often have some trouble with when they're dealing with parallel circuits. So in order to do this equation, what we do is we find the reciprocal of each of the variables, add them together, and that's going to equal the reciprocal of the total. So the way I look at it is I'm going to use the button on my calculator, calculator that says x to the negative 1. And that's the reciprocal button. So I'm going to plug in R1 and hit the on the calculator the x to the negative 1 button. And that's going to find the reciprocal. I'm going to add that to the reciprocal of the second, add that to the reciprocal of the third. Then what I need to do at the very end is find the reciprocal of my answer, and that will get me RT. So 1 over RT total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So as we add more components in parallel, we decrease the total resistance. And a good rule of thumb is RT must be less than the smallest resistor. And that's why when you plug in a toaster and all of a sudden you trip your circuit, that's the reason that's happening is because you add another component that has a really low resistance, which is why it has a high power output, and that will cause too much current to be drawn through the circuit and if it's bigger than 15 amps these are usually connected to the circuit breaker 15 amps here if this is larger than 15 amps it'll trip and then what will happen is you'll have an open circuit now traditionally though if you unplug one of the resistors what's going to happen is the electrons will still have a path to flow so that will allow current to still flow through the rest of the circuit you have a series circuit and you break it anywhere in the circuit, it completely eliminates the circuit flow. If you were to remove a single resistor from parallel, it will change the overall resistance of the circuit, maybe change the current flowing through each of the two remaining in this case, but it will allow the circuit to still work um, unimpeded. So if you unplug a lamp from your wall, it doesn't turn off the rest of the house. Needless to say, the voltage is the same everywhere in a parallel circuit. The current adds, and the resistance is a reciprocal relationship. And this is the one that students should probably work on the most because it's a little different than the way it worked with series circuits. So just watch out for this last equation. We'll look at a sample problem now. Now, to see the difference between a parallel and a series circuit, what we can do is use the same resistors that we did for series. We're going to connect to three light bulbs, the 100, the 75, and the 60 watts. So 144 ohm, 192 ohms, and 240 ohms. And we're going to connect it to the wall again, so 120 volts. Now, because the voltage is the same everywhere, we could find the current flowing in each section and just do V equals IR for each. So 120 divided by 144 will get me 0 0.833 amps in this segment. 120 divided by 192 gets me 0 0.625 amps in this section. And then finally, 120 divided by 240, which shouldn't need a calculator, 0 0.5 amps in that section. Now, if we remember, V is the same. So this has 120 volts, 120 volts, 120 volts. We know the voltage, the resistance, and the current in each. Now, we could find the power for each, which is P equals VI. So 120 times 0.833 is 100 watts. 
120 times 0.625 is 75 watts. You see the pattern? And 120 times 0.5, also don't need the calculator, 60 watts. <clears throat> so you have the same power output that's rated on the light bulbs. Now the one piece of the puzzle that, like I said before, was confusing for students is finding the equivalent resistance. Now it's not as important to simplify the circuit so we have the equivalent resistance, but what we can do is see if the current flowing here is the same as the total current that we just calculated. 0.5 plus IT is 0 0.833 amps plus 0 0.625 amps plus 0 0.5 amps. So 0 0.5 plus 0.625 plus 0.833 gets us 1.96 amps total. Now if we find the equivalent resistance and do V equals IR, we should get a number that's just about 1.96 amps. With rounding, because this number is rounded, it might not be exact. So let's find the equivalent resistance. 1 over RT equals 1 over 144 plus 1 over 192 plus 1 over 240. So I'm going to hit 144 x to the negative 1 plus 192 x to the negative 1 plus 240 x to the negative 1. I'm going to get a number that's 1 over RT equals 0 0.016319, etc., etc., dot, dot, dot. Well, that's the reciprocal of the answer. So I hit X to the negative 1 of that answer, and I get my RT to be 61.3 ohms. Now, that is the, what the, the power supply sees. So if I do 61.3, if I do V equals IR, here, I can get the current, 120, divided by 61.3, and I get 1.96 amps. Now, another way to check to see that I did that correctly is RT has to be less than the smallest resistor. And the smallest resistor is 144. That's less than 144, plus the current's matched, so I did it right.